ओके सो हियर वी डिस्कसिंग अ न्यूमेरिकल क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द चैप्टर थर्मोडायनामिक्स सो इट इज सेइंग इफ द रेशियो ऑफ स्पेसिफिक हीट ऑफ अ गैस एट कांस्टेंट प्रेशर टू दैट ऑफ कांस्टेंट वॉल्यूम इज गामा बेसिकली सीपी बाय सीवी इज इक्वल टू गामा द चेंज इन इंटरनल एनर्जी ऑफ अ मास ऑफ गैस व्हेन द वॉल्यूम चेंजेस फ्रॉम वी टू 3v अंडर कांस्टेंट प्रेशर इज गोइंग टू बी व्हाट यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट डेल्टा u फॉर द प्रोसेस वेयर दे हैव टोल्ड यू दैट p इज कांस्टेंट एंड योर v गोस टू 3v योर वॉल्यूम इंक्रीजेस टू थ्राइस द इनिशियल वैल्यू फाइन दिस इज ऑल द डेटा यू हैव सो लेट्स सी ओके सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड यू नो दैट cp CP by CV is equal to gamma. You know this, yes. Now uh, let's think of another way to write this. You know that CP minus CV is equal to R. This is also something we know. Cool. Now how about we write it as uh, CP is equal to R plus CV. Now what I will do is I will divide it throughout by CV. What I will get is gamma is equal to R by CV plus one. Yes. Okay. Cool. So which means uh, gamma minus one is equal to R by C V. Or I can say that C V by R is equal to one by gamma minus one, which means my C V is equal to R by gamma minus one. So I got this relation. Cool. I am going to highlight this because I will use it later on. C V is equal to R by gamma minus one. We got this. What is the expression for delta U? We know that delta U is equal to n C V delta T. Yes, C V we just found found out R by gamma minus one, so we'll write it as n R delta T by gamma minus one. Okay, they said that you have a constant pressure condition. So at constant pressure, you know that P delta V is equal to n R delta T. You know this for constant pressure condition, so I'm going to apply that here. So my entire numerator changes to p delta v divided by gamma minus one, right? Delta v is given to you. V final minus v initial. V final is three v. V initial is v. So you have delta v is equal to two v. So you will write two p v by gamma minus one. Gamma minus one. This is the answer. That you need, okay? So you need two PV by gamma minus one. This is the answer, okay? And yes, you can see it's here in option C. So option C, two PV by gamma minus one, is going to be the right answer to this question. Okay, so here they're saying that the energy involved to ionize O gas to O two minus gas is six hundred and thirty nine kilojoule per mole. If the ionization enthalpy of O minus gas is 141 kilojoule per mole. Okay, this is also the uh, something they've given you. The second electron gain enthalpy of oxygen would be what? Okay, so basically they're telling you that O plus two electrons gives you O two minus, and here your delta H is going to be 639 kilojoules per mole. Then you have O minus. uh gives you o plus electron right and here your delta h is going to be 141 kilojoule per mole they want you to find out what is going to be the electron gain enthalpy or the delta h for the reaction uh let's see o minus plus electron gives you o2 minus this is the reaction in question right second electron gain enthalpy you have to find out delta h for this reaction so Let's see. I'm going to write that here once again. O minus plus electron gives you O two minus. This is the reaction I need to arrive at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up these two reactions. I'm going to add up my first two reactions. So you can see I'll get O minus plus O plus two electrons, giving me O two minus plus O plus electron. Right. So uh, this two and this electron will cancel out. This O and this O will cancel out, which means I basically have O minus plus electron giving me O two minus. And for this, what did I do? I simply added both the reactions. So what will happen to delta H? I'll simply have to add up this and this value. So I get six thirty nine plus one forty one, 
which is nothing but you can see uh, 0, that's, uh, 8 and then you have 7 okay so you have 780 kilojoule per mole this is the value right and that is being suggested by option b so option b 780 kilojoule per mole is going to be the right answer to this question all right so here we have a question and this time we are dealing with the idea of average speeds from the chapter states of matter so they're saying at the same temperature calculate the ratio of average velocities of so2 and ch4 this is the question right so first of all what is the value of v average or u bar what is it the formula is under root of 8 rt by pi m cool they are telling you that t is a constant temperature is constant because because we are talking about the velocity of both the gases at the same temperature so temperature is constant r is anyway a constant pi is a constant 8 is also a constant right so your u1 by u2 will basically be under root of m2 by m1 this is the idea so you just need to calculate the molar masses of so2 and ch4 and take a ratio take a root that will be your answer fine so uh let's say your one is so2 and let's say your two is ch4 so quickly calculate the mass of so2 you have sulfur plus two into oxygen molar mass of sulfur 32 gram per mole plus two into oxygen is also going to be 2 into 16 32 this is going to be 64 gram per mole then you have ch4 where you can see that we have uh, 12 gram per mole coming from the carbon plus 4 into 1 gram per mole so you have 16 gram per mole as the molar mass of ch4 this will be under root of 64 by 16 this will cancel out um, sorry it's the other way around m2 by m1 right so 16 by 64 is what you have this will cancel out 1 by 4 because it's under root you get 1 by 2 final answer 1 is to 2 is going to be your ratio and that is here in option c so option c 1 is to 2 is the right answer to this question okay so here they're saying that the equilibrium constant for the following reaction is 49 at 450 degrees celsius and your reaction is given to you h2 plus i2 is in equilibrium with 2hi you know that all three of them are gaseous in nature then they're saying if 0.22 mole of i2 0.22 mole of h2 and 0.66 mole of hi were put in an evacuated one liter container right so basically we have taken different concentrations of i2 h2 and hi different number of moles of i2 h2 and hi and we have put it in a one liter container then you have to mark which of these will be correct right then what happens so basically uh, you have kc given to you and you have concentrations at a particular time given to you so you can find out qc so let's do that qc is going to be equal to uh, concentration of hi squared divided by concentration of one second concentration of h2 into concentration of i2 so what's the concentration of hi 0.66 mole and everything is in mole per liter right your volume of the vessel is one liter so i can simply write number of moles and i'll still get the same value so i get 0.66 into 0.66 divided by concentration of h2 and i2 both 0.22 right so this is what you get so can you cancel it out you'll get 3 basically 3 into 3 9 your qc is 9 and your kc is 49 so qc is less than kc which means the reaction will have to move reaction will move forward to attain equilibrium right the reaction has not reached equilibrium yet so it has to move forward in order to attain equilibrium now let's look for that in the options so it says reaction will proceed in a forward direction until equilibrium is established absolutely true reaction will proceed in the backward direction until equilibrium is established no you have option c reaction is already at equilibrium no you can say that reaction is at equilibrium when qc is equal to kc you can say the reaction will proceed in the backward direction when qc is greater than kc but here you have qc is less than kc which means the reaction will have to proceed in the forward direction to reach equilibrium right so the correct answer here is going to be option a 
So here they're saying which of the following reactions will be favored in the forward direction when the pressure in the system is increased, right? So if your number of gaseous moles on the product side is less than the number of gaseous moles on the reactant side, forward reaction will be favored when we increase the pressure. Why? Because when you increase the pressure, the equilibrium tends to shift in a direction which has lower number of gaseous moles, right? So if you have lower number of gaseous moles on the product side, then increasing the pressure will encourage your reaction to move in the forward direction more, right? So now let's look at it. You have option A, calcium carbonate solid, right? CaCO3 solid is heated to give calcium oxide solid plus carbon dioxide gas, right? What is happening here? You have number of gaseous moles on the product side is equal to 1 number of gaseous moles on the reactant side is equal to zero. So when you do increase the pressure, your reaction is more likely to shift backwards, not forwards, right? So this is not what we're looking for. One is not the case. What about two? You have magnesium solid plus H2O gas is in equilibrium with MgOH2 aqueous plus H2 gas. So number of gaseous moles on the product side and number of gaseous moles on the reactant side. On the product side, you have one and on the reactant side, you have two. So here, if you increase the pressure, the reaction will move towards the forward direction, which is the direction which has lesser number of gaseous moles, right? Great. Then you have third one, 2N2O5 is in equilibrium with O2 plus 4NO2. Here, number of gaseous moles on the product side is 5 and on the reactant side is 2. Cool. Because of which, when you increase the pressure, your reaction is more likely to move in the backward direction. Again, third is not the case that we want. So, the only case which will be forward, uh, sorry, which will be favored in the forward direction when you increase the pressure is going to be case two and that is being suggested by option A. So option A two only is going to be the right answer to this question.